Hey, Hoop fans, in a few days, you will get the opportunity to enjoy a complimentary screening of my film, A League of Our Own, which is a film, a movie about the three most successful women's basketball professional leagues of our time, the WBL, the Women's Basketball League, the ABL, American Basketball League, and of course, the WNBA. So I'll keep this short. Keep an eye out for the invitation. It will be complimentary. All I ask that you do is to share it with everybody you know who loves women's basketball, who loves historical films and who love to see women and sports women winning all right stay tuned keep it locked it's coming soon turn that volume up you know you want it it's time for women's basketball tv with former ncaa champion wnba champion business mogul and national tv personality fran harris all right, Hoop fans, getting ready for the WNBA season 28, tipping off on May 14th. You probably saw some of the preseason games, the exhibition games. I'm going to do a quick run through of kind of the highlights of the past week, and then we will start official coverage of the WNBA season 28 tomorrow after media day for Dallas. So for those of you who are new here, Women's Basketball TV, I am Fran Harris. I am a former WNBA champion, played with Houston Comets on the first championship team, played one season with Utah Stars, covered the league for ESPN, Lifetime Television, and also covered the San Antonio Silver Stars for Fox, been in the league and around the league for its entire life cycle so far. I will be covering about 20, 21 games for the Dallas Wings this season my hometown of Dallas, and many of you know that I am also working on bringing a WNBA team to Austin. I attended, played on a national championship team at the University of Texas, love women's basketball, building this channel as one of the most provocative, most knowledgeable fans on this channel um, that you will see on YouTube. Also going to bring some fun fan stuff that we're going to be doing in this second season that I've had the channel just start the channel maybe about mm, eight months ago, something like that, nine months ago. So we're going to be doing some fan stuff, some giveaways. I will actually be promoting my documentary about women's pro hoops here in a second. So y'all stay tuned, keep it locked, make sure you sub, make sure you like, share, and comment. But most importantly, show up every week for some great content and give me your thoughts on all that. So let's jump into season 28 officially jumping in and let's talk about who I believe had the best draft. I believe it was Chicago sky. There's going to be some exciting basketball this summer, but the Chicago sky got angel Reese and Camilla Cardoso. And I'm not even ready to talk about who else they picked up in the off season, but let's just talk about, I think they got the best of the draft. I was one of those people saying that Angel Reese at midseason, like Angel, you might want to stay another season from just purely from a basketball standpoint. But honestly, eh, she's getting, she's already gotten better. She's gotten in the gym. What Angel needed to do was to get in the gym to figure out how to develop her skills. And she has clearly done that in a short period of time, starting to develop some of those, those skills that she needs to not just survive in the WNBA, but thrive in the WNBA. She's got to get a face up game. She's got to get a six to eight to 12 foot jumper. She's got to run the floor. She's got to use the things that really made her great in college, accelerate those things and accentuate those things in the WNBA, run the floor, run the rim, play defense. I have also heard that Angel Reese has been very vocal in training camp. So there you go. Already starting to step into her leadership skills at the Chicago Sky gymnasium and practice facility. I love the fact that she is playing for a coach who is extremely fiery. I've known Teresa Weatherspoon says she was 16 years old, recruited her to come to Texas. She did not come to Texas, played at the great Louisiana Tech. And I played on several USA national teams with Teresa Weatherspoon. So I know her heart and her love for the game, her passion for the game, and that's going to be matched with Angel Reese. So I look forward to watching Angel Reese get better this season. I'll be calling some of her games, you know, when they come to Dallas. So I'll get to see her up close and personal. Cardoso, we know national champion Camilla Cardoso will be a force. Minor injury, I believe right now, I actually haven't read the update on that, so you, you guys may know more about that than I do right now. I've been kind of busy this weekend up here in Dallas. But, yeah, you're, you're looking at 6'7"-ish, a post player who is going to eventually be one to be reckoned with. I love the draft that Chicago Sky, the Chicago Sky got. Amazing. Amazing pickups with these two college players, outstanding college careers, and now it's turn to turn it, time to turn it up. 
and really show what they can do in the WNBA. Caitlin got to see Caitlin up close in her first WNBA game, albeit exhibition in Dallas. I was there on hand for Dallas press row got to come on in the, on television in the fourth quarter to kind of talk a little bit about it, but it was extremely fast. But let me tell you what I thought about my first impressions of Caitlin. I thought she looked very comfortable out there on the floor. I mean, I don't know what y'all expected, but I expected Caitlin to be extremely comfortable as a as a, a rookie in the WNBA. Yes, she has been very upfront about the pressure she feels. She's been very upfront about the expectations that are up on her, not just put up on her by herself, but uh, sponsors and the W and fans and media, all that very, what I appreciate most about Caitlin is that she has been extremely forthcoming about her own personal odyssey in the WNBA. So anyway, looked comfortable, knocked that first three down. Everybody looked around. It's like, here we go. It was really fun. The building was incredible. Dallas, one of the best experiences, best organizations in the WNBA. And, you know, they did not disappoint. It was packed. There was not a ticket to be sold. I have family members asking me for tickets. I'm like, sorry, people, I got no tickets. I'm on press row myself. So it was a, a phenomenal atmosphere. And it was cool to just see. We knew that Dallas was going to, you know, send out their folks, their fans. But walking up, I actually have some video I'll share with you guys. Walking up, seeing all those Caitlin fans and those Indiana fans was was next level, was absolutely next level. So that was cool. On the positive side on the on the observation side i've said this maintain this will never change this in the videos that i did all college season long and that is everybody who goes to the next level has a learning curve you got a learning curve you got an emotional learning curve you got a psychological learning curve you got a physical learning curve you got a mental learning curve i mean you got a media learning curve i don't know why people don't think that that every rookie has a learning curve every rookie has a learning curve Every rookie has to realize at some point that what got him to the best of the best in the previous season as a college player is not enough in the WNBA because you're facing bigger, stronger, faster, better. And Caitlin saw that. Caitlin saw that. Caitlin asked for a sub. Did y'all y'all pick that up? Did y'all pick up what I'm putting down right now? Caitlin asked for a sub because she was tired. But hey, here's the thing. This is what people leave it out. Caitlin was also tired, not just because of the lift in the WNBA. She was also tired because she's played eight months of, of basketball. I mean, let's not forget that. She just finished playing an eight-month season. So she's she's gassed because of that as well. But there is also bigger, faster, stronger, better. And the thing that everybody seems to be on this trip about, oh, why are people saying that, you know, they're hating and they're and I'm like, that's that's so dumb. That's that's the stupidest observation I have ever heard. It's dumb to say that because people go, these rookies are going to have a, a, a different lift in the WNBA. These rookies are going to have a learning curve that there's that that's hate or jealousy. That's just that's just not thinking. OK, better, faster, stronger, quicker means you got to work harder. You got to work harder to get your shot. And Caitlin was having to work. And you know why? Because Dallas was sending everything they had at her. They sent six, five, Natasha. Um, can't think of her last name, post player for, for Dallas. They sent Natasha Howard. They sent small and quick. They sent big and quick. They sent lean and long. They, they sent, because you have to send those kinds of players at Caitlin if you're going to have even a remote chance of stopping her. So come on, y'all. I mean, come on, y'all. I, I feel like y'all are some of the most knowledgeable, at least on my channel, some of the most, based on your comments, some of the most knowledgeable fans in, in the league. And we can't keep saying stuff that just doesn't make sense. Caitlin's going to have to up her game because these are the best players in the world, period. And 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 Caitlin has acknowledged that, so why can't her fans acknowledge it? It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Anyway, in the press room after the game, I did ask Caitlin a question. I was like, Caitlin, so when you played at Iowa, you never left the floor. And, in fact, I've seen her at, at times at Iowa last season and this season – Coach would, uh, Lisa Bluter would look at her and like, hey, you need to blow. You need, you know, you want to come out or whatever. And she, nah, she's waved her off. I'm not coming out. You know, I'm not coming out. So I said, how is it to start adjusting to the fact that you will not likely at the beginning of your career be on the floor for 40 minutes? And she says, I actually like it. I actually, I think it's a positive. 
there were times that Iowa, I could not come off the floor. My team needed me on the floor for us to even have a chance to win. So I couldn't leave the floor. And she said, now I'm in a situation where I'm playing with the best in the world. These players are, you know, better than I am. They're more experienced than I am. And I'm going to come off the floor. And she said, a lot of times I would have to save myself. That's, that's not the word she used, but that's what my coach used to call it when I wouldn't play hard. She says, I will probably, Caitlin says, I will probably get to play harder. I can play harder because I'm not having to play 40 minutes. So fans, y'all can take that. Now y'all can take that. And when people are talking about Caitlin not playing a whole lot, it's probably best for the Indiana Fever team that she's not on the floor 39, 40 minutes. Out of her own mouth, she said, I'm going to be able to play harder because I am not playing longer. She said, there were times in my Iowa uniform where I couldn't play as hard as I wanted to because I needed to save myself. I needed to make sure I had enough to finish games. To catch part two of the opening game between Indiana and the Dallas Wings, watch part two. Thanks for tuning in to Women's Basketball TV with Fran Harris, the most provocative and entertaining women's basketball show on earth. Be sure to click that like, share and notification button so you don't miss a moment. We'll see you tomorrow.